Right, I'm doing it. I'm going on a micro adventure. So, if you don't know what micro adventure is, look up Alistair Humphreys, he'll tell you all about it. But it's quite a cool thing. He redefines the nine till five, he calls it a five till nine. So, basically, after work, you finish. Well, I don't quite finish at five, but you have five, six. You basically, you've got them from five till nine the next day to go and have an adventure. So I'm going to go to Cramon Island and camp overnight. And it's quite an adventure because once you get on Cramon Island, the tide comes up and you can't get back off until the next morning. I'm just going for a night and back to work tomorrow. So I've got tent, a sleeping mat, um, little camping chair. I've got some gas so I can cook up maybe a pot noodle tonight just for a treat and have some coffee in the morning but I'm not going to take a lot of cooking stuff, really just enough to boil up water and the minimum amount of clothes and so I've got two panniers loaded up with stuff and then I'm going to have a backpack so the real thing I've still got to decide just now to do is decide how many clothes to take I probably just need to pay the fresh underwear for the morning and that, that'll do me, because I'm in the office, there's a, there's, there's a shower in the office as well, so really I'm just trying to take the minimum amount of stuff to go and have a fun little adventure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the shop and pick up some snacks and fun stuff. So come with me and we'll go to the shop and get the stuff. Right, cool. Right, I'm off to the B Tesco Metro. I've got my backpack on with the jet boil in it, so I don't know how much room I've got spare. All else I need to stick in there is like some underwear, maybe a spare t-shirt, so I've got plenty of room for food. I will get myself a few little treats. I got some food, hardly any food, and I got some beer. More beer than food. There's something terrifying about being on an island that I can't get off during the night, thinking, oh, I want another beer. So I'm not planning to drink a lot, I'm going to pick up a little cans, but I think I've got five. Uh, you always want one more than you've got. All I need to do now is just figure out what clothes to wear when I'm cycling there and which clothes to bring and then I'll be off looking for a chippy on the way. I couldn't find my head torch but I've got this beanie with a little light on it and I've got like a bike light and the phone as well and a battery pack so I shouldn't run out of light. So we're getting closer to launch. Bye for now. Right we're getting there so you can see down here I've got the two panniers and this is my jeep bag that I use all the time. I'm just flick it around. This is all the gear. So I've got this jeep bag, it's about 35 litre capacity and it's pretty much full to the brim. And two panniers are pretty stuffed as well. So one of the reasons I'm doing this little adventure is also just to see how many bags I need for like a longer tour. So I'm planning hopefully doing the North Coast 500, maybe this year or next. And I'm just like looking at like large rear pannier bags, rack bags, front panniers and just trying to get a feel. So Basically all I've got in here is like a tent, a big sleeping bag, camping mat, jet boil, hardly any food really. Which reminds me, I'm going to put the pot noodle in the thing, we'll do that. And it takes up quite a lot, you know, the sleeping bags are big bulky things. One of these bags is basically taken up entirely by a sleeping bag and uh, a warm jacket. So I will hopefully try and get a bit of a smaller sleeping bag, but that's the, I think that's one of the trickiest things to get really small. It is quite a lot of stuff. God knows how these people with bike packing bags get all this kind of stuff on. Um, I guess they're not always carrying all the same stuff. But we're pretty much ready to go. I'm glad I recorded this so I remembered that my pot noodle, or that would have been bad. And I'm going to hit the road. So here we go.
all at my office. Right, I think this is my home for tonight. I was going to set up a tent, but the, the grass wasn't great, and also I realised I hadn't attached my tent outer into the inner, and it would be a bit of a faff. So, I've got all this crazy camera equipment, I'm super paranoid someone's going to sneak in tonight and nick it all, but I'm sure they won't, they'll probably get a fright to see me. There's a handy little bit of metal there I can use to lock the bike up. And then the surface in here is quite clean. So I think I'll sleep here. People are probably gonna come across in the night and shit themselves. But there we go. It's my bed. Woo! Right, welcome, I made it. So I found my little bone. I'm not gonna use the tent because I couldn't find a good spot really. So mat and a sleeping bag. So this is camp for the night. It's quite exciting. I've got a pot noodle to eat. I didn't make it for chips. I'm really hungry. Uh, shame I didn't but bring some firewood because there's like campfire and stuff. And yeah I've got some neighbours. They're probably getting freaked out. They're just camping up around the corner. So if they come down later in the night they'll get fright. Um, I've not been mature to get it yet, I'm scared I'm going to steal it. I'm, I don't know why, I'm just super paranoid. I hope people come to steal things, but it's basically just campers on the island. So I shouldn't really worry. So I'll get the trip oil set up and we'll have some food and then I can crack in it some beer, which will be fun. And yeah, I'll just get that. I should use my bloody chair. I bought it for a reason. <laughs> Holy smokes! 
that's a lot of gas. Right, relax now. I've got the jet boiler has boiled some water super fast. I've got a plug in it. I've got the bed already set up and blown up. I've got the the Helinox Chair Zero to hold my memory in. So I'm just waiting for my pot noodle to, to brew. Leave it nice and long so the water all soaks into the noodles. And then I will crack open a beer and we can maybe get a time lapse shot out of the sunset. Then it's going to get scary. I think I'm going to give a lot of people. A fright. As if a couple of people just walked past and got a fright. I think I'm some crazy homeless guy. So that'll be fun. So the day trippers technically can escape the island all the way up till the midnight, so there's still gonna be stragglers. But then after midnight, the island is our own. Well me and about five, six other people at least. So it's like two three different campsites I can see. There's people over in the the west coast and then there's a couple just up. And me, they're probably going to be wandering down later on, so they'll get a wee fright. So hopefully, maybe I should shout earlier that I'm staying here so they don't get fright. Maybe after I've had a beer. Okay, bye for now. Right, it's pretty cool. Sunset. Pop a little bruise. So there we have the. Fourth bridges, all three of them in the glory. And the lovely red sunset over Fife. So I've brought metal cutlery. It's always nice to have some metal cutlery, it's not too heavy. This is definitely a luxury along with a chair. There we go. Nice, solid form. So I spent ages wandering around the island. I was trying to find a nice little campsite. But then in the end, you know, you've got all these buildings here. Why not? So, I don't know what time it is, it's almost 10 o'clock. And I left the house around 7, so I've been wandering around a lot. But it's the first time I've been here on Grumman Island, so I think now that I'm, I'm here, I now know sort of the lay of the land a little bit. And I think I was coming to camp again, like for a weekend trip. I basically want to try and get here early and set up, set up tent early, especially maybe it's like Friday night or something. It's probably a little weekend camp. Room. So you want to kind of come here a prime spot, and then other people might join you. But I'm doing a little solo mission just now. I'll I'll speak to people back there just so they don't freak out. But they're maybe not working tomorrow. They're not on a micro adventure. I'm doing five till nine, so I'll be sitting at my desk tomorrow morning by just after nine probably. Mm. That was worth the wait. Oh my goodness. Delicious. I can definitely enjoy a beer after this. Right, I'm gonna eat this. Pretty safe. Bye for now. Now for food in. Kiwi, melon and strawberries, one pound fifty. Tesco Metro. Use my metal spoon as well. Came with not getting for the knife. Mm. Let's do 
the good news, there doesn't seem to be any midges. I think it's maybe it's just so close to the sea that the wind blows them away. So, no, it's a welcome, a welcome discovery. I'm still worried that people steal all my stuff. Who's going to do that? Who's going to get up if it's not off the island at like six in the morning? Come in here and somehow not stir me. Like I'll be super on edge anyway all through the time. So no one's going to steal my stuff. But I'm going to keep it all in my pockets and I'm not going to go lying about the place. But the wife's walked up. The key will be in my pocket. Didn't sleep in that. bag with all the equipment in it will be by my side. It's funny like even when you're out camping in old places it feels really odd just leaving your bike just like you know laid by your tent. In fact I think I've always locked it up. I was at Comrade Rock and I just left my mountain bike out all night. I was absolutely terrified but it was fine. Definitely getting a little colder now. But we plenty of warm clothes. For this jacket, I've got a padded jacket. I've got merino wool. I've got the sleeping bag, it's pretty thick. So, worst case scenario, just put everything on. Again, the sleeping bag. But I will need a beer or two just to get me to sleep away. My pillow is just basically a dry bag with tomorrow's clothes in it. Mm. Have a beer. I'll need to do an untapped check and I'm sure the Cameron Island is a, is a venue and that'll be quite fun. So this is my first beer. I'll see how I get on with this. I'm looking forward to it. Right. It's dark now and realised that's a bloody hole in the roof. So let's hope it doesn't rain because the the water's going to land here and I'm sleeping here. It's getting uh, real now. Not long until we're properly tied us up and we can't escape. Well, I can't escape. So I went up. And I spoke to the people up on the hill. There's like a few young campers. They're, quite, they're just kind of like teenagers, like 16, 17, whatever. They seem fairly sensible people. They don't make much of a noise. They've got a big fire going. So I just let them know, like, just so they don't get a fright, they come down. That I'm sleeping down here. Because I know I would definitely be wandering about in the dark with a torch. It gets dark. So. It's a pretty cool view. I don't know if you can see that in the dark, but the, the bridges are lit up. Nice view. Firth of Forth. And this is my campsite. So we're using the jet oil in the morning. I'll move all that stuff out from the doorway once I get to sleep. And here's the bed. And the thing that I've instantly reminded myself of is that when you go camping, you get so much stuff, like, like things. I can't even name the things, but just your food stuff, your clothes. You get like bags with the cameras. You get the bags with the chargers, and it. You put it down, and you just lose it. You're like, where did I put that bag? Yeah, that's it. You've got the sleeping bag bag. You've got the tent bag. You've got the um, the chair bag. Then inside these bags, there's like little repair kits. And I'm like, well, I don't want to, I need to take the little repair kit out. If I'm going to make that in my pillow, where I'll be like sleeping in a repair kit. So you stick that in a little pocket, and I'll be safe. And things just go missing. So, one of the things I was reading about when I was trying to decide between two or four panniers, which now makes a lot more sense, even after just one short experiment, is your four panniers are like, they call them like, call them like different rooms. You feel like your kitchen, your bedroom. That kind of stuff, your sort of. So, the bedroom is your, your sleeping equipment. I guess your house would be where the tent goes. 
kitchens, all your kitchen stuff, and then you're like your wardrobe for all your clothes, and then at least then you know which bag's which. And then someone made a good point as well, look, they put their valuable electrics on the side of the pannier, the opposite to where they put the bike against the wall. So if the bike falls down from the wall and smashes on the ground with the panniers, the panniers that are hitting off the ground are the ones without electric equipment on it. So that's the kind of little tips you end up acquiring watching thousands of hours of YouTube, you know. So I'm picking up these little things. So yeah, the four pannier thing is definitely a good idea. I almost went flying on the way down here, carrying the bike down the thing and then now it's, I see when yeah when you've just got the weight on the back wheel and you're you're trying to roll down bike down steep hills, the thing just like oh, went flipping up like a like a horse had just gone mental. So having the weight on the front as well and just being able to push your bike down funny places because this this island's pretty pretty rough. The paths and that are all overgrown. It's quite tricky pushing the bike here. So I now see the value of four panniers and the 60-40 load sort of ratio of having a wee bit more weight at the back but you know 4% the front, 60 the back. My, my lesson for tonight and what I've learned is four panniers is better than two even if it's a little bit more weight that weight is actually a good thing. Having a two and a half kilos of like rack and bag you know before any of the stuff's in it that's actually helping. Uh, that's, that's counterbalancing all the weight load that's definitely going to be in the back. So bye for now. I don't know how, but they found me. Oh my god, where are they? I can hear them. They've come, they found me. I knew they would. I can't hide. I couldn't hide forever. How was I meant to? How was I meant to go? I don't know. Oh my god. What did I do? I don't know. <laughs> They're gonna get me. I'm only joking. It's fine. <laughs> I was going to read some ghost stories to myself. Oh. But I decided I'm just quite tired. So. There we go. That's me. This is me for the night. I have two small cans of beer just to keep me a little bit warm and keep my spirits high, considering I'm just about to sleep on a hard floor with a very thin air mat and the sun is going to come blaring through these slits here. 4.30 in the morning, straight there. Now there was one of these concrete hut things, military things, that was like super dark, but it was too dark, it was terrifying looking. And if I slept in there, the sun was not coming in there. It was, there was no windows on it, there was one door on the side that was away from the sunrise, so it would be pitch black. Pretty much. It was pretty much pitch black at the back of it during the day. So you can't see much. But this is my house. So I'm just going to do a wee pee and clean my teeth and then get to bed and then we'll see you in the morning. Don't forget your toothbrush. I'll clean your teeth. There's a bright light in the sky. Yeah, it's a plane. Right, it's definitely bedtime now. So here we go. Went to bed. Alright, so I 
I've woken up. This concrete bed is not very comfy. I mean, I've got a nap, but I felt like I was awake all night, rolling about, trying to get comfy. But I haven't been sleeping. And I kept dreaming that people were stealing my stuff. But it's all here for the looks of it. So, I forgot I've got my wee porridge thing now, so I'm going to make some porridge. And then I can have my coffee. And then we'll see what's on. So, bye for now. Right, so it's a little bit more than we might as well be out in the sun. Let's get some water on the go. Some porridge. The sun is set in the east over there, so it can blaring in. I was awake before seven, I should have just got up, but I can fancy another hour of sleep. So I'm going ready. This thing's fast. Yeah, that was good. Who lives in a house like this? Hmm. So what we learn from this micro adventure? I've learned that it's probably better to camp than sleep with the mat and the concrete because I'm sure the ground is going to be a bit comfier. So to get here a bit earlier to get a good one of the good camping spots, there's not as many good camping spots as there used to be. So to camp I need to make sure my tent is set up with the outer attached onto the inner. And yeah, I guess, because I've not been here before, I was a bit anxious about trying to find a good spot. So I did waste a lot of time. So I think next time I come, at least I know the main camping bits. There's like a bit up there, there's a bit, the bit over there. But I do have a feeling that at the weekend, this place is probably pretty crazy. This bit here is obviously going to be quite popular with people to come and stay. Yeah, if I was coming to stay and I knew I was going to stay in the concrete bits, maybe I would even take like a, a massive big inflatable bed, the, the big style ones. Not the camping ones, the ones that you kind of use in your house. Maybe for a bit more comfort. I'll let the porridge stand. Let's go and see how the bridges are getting on. Start it probably. That's what happens when you don't stir the porridge. It says on the side, stir well. And what did I do? Just poured it in like a pot noodle. Yep, stir the porridge next time. Stir well, it says. Right, so the, one of the most important, well, the most important thing if you're doing a little uh, micro adventure or going to stay anywhere in the night is to leave no trace whatsoever behind. So, this is the stuff I consumed last night. 
So that all become with me, and I'll basically leaving it just as I found it. But you go for a micro adventure. This is what you can wake up to. So I'm Ali Burns, and that has been my first midweek micro adventure, a bike trip to Grand Island. Bye for now. Right, so normally my micro adventure would have failed, the, the 5 till 9 didn't quite work out due to roadblock and I had a meeting, but we live in a digital age, so luckily I have a Zoom call. Hi Ali! How was last night? Um, yeah, don't get lonely Ali. No, I only had two wee cans of beer, you know what the stupid thing is, like, you know it's like, I mean, I'm on an island, I can't go out and get any more beer, I bought five little cans of beer which weigh a ton, like, they're just little. So my backpack was heavy, and I thought I should have just brought a couple of beers. I just I didn't want the, the danger of like imagine I find a wee party and I've drank with two beers and they're like, oh come on over. And so, if I, you know, next time I think a, a bottle of Buckfast would be nice. Not one of them in a while. That would just be imagine sitting well, watching the sunset. Like, 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 Wait to like, alcohol, hi. You know, yeah. Don't want a hangover, but I want I just I want a wee, wee bit tipsy to help me sleep, it help the nerves of like someone stealing all my stuff. But no, it was good. I had way too much food, way Ali, too much stuff. Why don't you go get some lunch or breakfast now? Aye, right, I'll get. I'll do that then. I'll I'll, I'll pop into the. Need your energy, yeah. Get some proper. Aye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.
delicious breakfast. Chapter one, fully plant based, full breakfast. And I'm now head back into work, the final little part of the journey. battery back in the office micro adventure a success <laughs> <laughs>